Today we'll hear testimony from the defense psychiatric expert, Dr. Uh, Janice Hunter. Counsel? Dr. Hunter, did you examine the defendant, David Savino? Yes, I performed a complete psychiatric evaluation. I spent a few hours with him over four days, and I also reviewed his complete medical file. And what is your assessment of his psychiatric health? He's seriously disturbed. He suffers from at least three disorders recognized and classified in the DSM-5. In addition to bipolar disorder, he has suffered from schizophrenia since he was 18 years old. He hears voices, and he fails to accurately distinguish between real stimuli and his delusions. His medical file shows an escalating pattern of hospitalizations and outpatient treatment with antipsychotic medications, followed by relapses when he refuses to take his meds. This has been going on for the last 15 years. I sincerely classify him as mentally ill. Yes, but... Would you say that his mental disease prevents him from appreciating the nature and wrongfulness of his actions? Definitely. I mean, he hears voices. He told me that God sometimes communicates with him and that CIA agents are planning to kidnap him and take him to a secret facility overseas for enhanced interrogation. He's far divorced from reality. I don't see how he can be held responsible for his actions. He's not guilty. He's sick. He should be in a hospital. Do the people wish to cross-examine this witness? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Dr. Hunter, did Mr. Savino explain to you why he committed this crime? Sure. What did he say? He told me that he thought Jason had stolen his phone. He wanted it back, and he asked Mr. Sharp to help him. Did he say that voices in his head told him that Jason had stolen his phone? No, but he... In fact, do you have any evidence that mental illness played a part in Mrs. Savino's decision to commit the crime? Well, it just stands to reason. He's psychotic. He wasn't thinking clearly. Your Honor, the people concede that the defendant is very sick. However, the defense has not established that his mental disease prevented him from accepting or appreciating the wrongfulness of his action. In this case, the robbery of his phone has nothing to do with his mental illness. We've heard no testimony that the defendant felt that he needed to steal the phone because God commanded it or that he needed to take the phone back because the CIA had stolen it from him in the first place. His mental illness is completely tangential to this case. We therefore request that you disallow the insanity defense. <laughs> Thank you.